Welcome to the Weather Insights Tropical Briefing. This is Sunday morning, September 8th, and uh, we're recording this at 10 Central because I want to give out the time because we're going to be going a couple times a day now that we have something uh, in the Gulf of Mexico with a 90% chance of development over the next 48 hours, 80%, or excuse me, 90% over the next seven days, 80% over the next 48 hours. Likely, Jeff, this will become a tropical depression Sometime early tomorrow, we'll get another update um, from the National Hurricane Center. They're sending a plane down there, so we'll get another update later this afternoon and have another briefing this evening. But right now, it looks like this thing is going to form into something and possibly a name storm by Tuesday, Wednesday. The general track is pretty much the same. We'll get into the details of that in a minute. Of course, we're also looking at two other systems out in the southern Atlantic Basin. Disturbance 2 with a 60% chance of development over the next seven days. And then Disturbance 3 <laughs> uh, with a 50% chance of development over the next seven days. Of course, all eyes are on the system in the Gulf. There's the convection. Uh, Jeff, when I was looking at this satellite last night, not much change in terms of organization. It's still a mess. Uh, I'm not seeing a, a whole lot there, but uh, the convection is definitely there. And it's kind of, you, you see that convection north of the Bay of Campeche. That's kind of the old system that's been hugging the coast. And they're kind of merging together, I guess, for lack of a better term. And then uh, this thing will start uh, heading northwest a little bit, forecast to turn north and then northeast. Again, we'll get into that track a little bit more but plenty of convection out there just little organization and um, i guess that's why national hurricane center is sending a plane out there just to make sure that we're not missing anything with uh, the instruments that we're measuring here so here's the track and like i said uh, the, the general motion or direction is north and turning to the northeast and the angle of the approach and, and all of that, Jeff, the distance from the shoreline is going to make a big difference in the impacts, especially for the Texas coastline over the next few days. Yeah, it, it, it can never be easy, can it? You know, yeah. it's just uh, we have one of these interesting tracks, uh, again, kind of coming up from the south, maybe even the south southwest um, and, and kind of slow here over the next 12 to 24 to 48 hours, you know, a, a northwest, north northwest motion. Uh, we'll have to see how close this gets to the proximity here of South Texas. This could bring some impacts down here towards South Padre, uh, Brownsville area with some squalls and gusty winds. And, and then you kind of get this bend here back to the northeast, uh, north northeast and northeast. And, and we'll, you know, the, the question is, is, is when do all of these turns kind of happen? Um, and, and as you mentioned, kind of a parallel to the coast. So very small changes in the track can make very large differences where the center uh, makes landfall. So, you, you know, you could be talking uh, just a slight difference here to make the difference of, of tens of miles, um, maybe even 100 miles here along the upper Texas and southwest Louisiana coast, just because of the way the coast uh, is is parallel to the track. And so, uh, again, this is model guidance. This this has shifted around. We saw this kind of shift over here uh, to the to the east yesterday. So this is the 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 consensus or the the agreement and the the middle ground, if you will, of all the guidance tracks uh, over the last four guidance cycles. So this goes back to uh, yesterday uh, around noon. And you can see the the darker color here one is the most recent and the lightest one is the oldest. And what's interesting is we've had this kind of shift over to the east and then it's kind of migrated back a little bit to the west and yeah. is, is pretty much where it ended up or where it started. And so, yeah. you know, I, I wouldn't key in a whole lot on this right now because we don't really have a defined surface center down here. Yep. And as we saw with barrel, um, as it kind of reformed here in the in the Gulf of Mexico and reformed a little bit to the north, that made a big difference on the track. And so I don't want to get I don't want people to get too locked in on this just yet, but be aware there's something down there. It's likely going to come to the north in some fashion, and there's going to be some sort of impact here on the Texas, Louisiana coast as we get into midweek. And, and exactly what those impacts are going to be 
uh, is going to be really determined on the on the track of this. So obviously close to the coast, you're going to get greater impacts. Further offshore, we might not get as as much of an impact. And you know, still still undetermined here in, in Louisiana, uh, Southwest Louisiana, Lake Charles, even as far east as Lafayette. Uh, what kind of impacts you're looking at there. And as far as the intensity goes, generally speaking, the consensus here is a, is a tropical storm, probably a mid-range, possibly a strong tropical storm. Could we get a hurricane out of this? Yeah, we could, um, if conditions kind of come together. And the, the if we were to get a hurricane, we'd probably start to see some development here um, a little bit faster here over the next 12 to 24 hours. Um, but there's a lot of factors in the northwestern Gulf that we're going to be dealing with. All the dry air that everybody's, you know, out enjoying this weekend is going to try to wrap into this system on the west side. So this this could be a situation where it's a very lopsided type system, very common in the western Gulf, where you don't have a lot on the western side of it. And again, that plays into the impacts part of this, because if the system is passing in our offshore waters, you may not have a lot of, of weather on that north and west side of it. And so we'll just have yeah. to see how it evolves. Um, and, and there's some things, while the water temperatures are warm, there's some things with the dry air, maybe some shear up in the northern Gulf that, that kind of keep this in, in check. And uh, we'll, we'll see how this plays out. But you can see this is the intensity guidance. And again, like we mentioned, uh, we're sort of starting to lean into the impacts part of this. I think it's a little bit early. I think later today, uh, we'll, we'll hopefully have a little bit more confidence in some of the impacts. But, you know, this is this is a, a fairly decent representation of the rainfall potential. And I think the point to be made right now is not to get locked in on these numbers, but the gradient. Yeah. Um, and what we mean by gradient is, you know, some areas near the coast could get five, six, seven, eight inches of rain. By the time you get up to US 59 or, or away from the coast, a county or two, you could be talking less than an inch of rain. And, and, and there's some areas here, College Station, Columbus, uh, that may see absolutely nothing. And again, we're very sensitive to the forecast track. If this shifts a little bit further to the east and south, these numbers are going to come down uh, in the inland areas here of southeast Texas and, and even over here towards the Beaumont Port Arthur area. Um, if it were to shift a little bit to the west, these numbers are going to come up some. And so we're just very sensitive to that track right now. And we'll just have to see how things play out. And, and then lastly, we'll talk about tides. Um, I'm hoping we're going to get some guidance from the National Hurricane Center this afternoon after the plane gets in there yeah. um, mm -hmm. to, to kind of firm up some of this stuff, because this is being run off a, of a certain model. And you can see we, we are bumping. The, the tides are getting up there. You know, we're talking one to two feet above normally dry ground as we get into that Wednesday, Thursday time period. And, and that's probably another important thing to mention. We're not anticipating any impacts here tomorrow today or tomorrow, Sunday or Monday, moisture starts to come back, squalls, some showers down on the coast start to come back on Tuesday. Wednesday's kind of the day that this is going to either kind of brush by us um, or bring the impacts in here. And so Wednesday into, into Wednesday night and possibly Thursday morning would be the time we really need to be paying attention for whatever's gonna happen down. You know, if we're gonna get some high tides on the coast, we're gonna have some issues down there, some gusty winds. The heavy rainfall potential it, it's going to be in that wednesday to wednesday night period but uh, for the next 24 to 36 hours here in southeast texas we have nice weather and dry weather to to contend with as we watch this kind of come up from the from the south yeah we uh, are enjoying low temperatures this morning on sunday morning in the 60s and expect a, another morning of that monday monday morning as you pointed out the impacts don't start so maybe Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday time frame. So another nice morning on mon Monday morning, but then the humidity starts to creep at, back in. So as we say many times, the key message here is to keep checking back frequently because things can change very quickly. So you can do that right here. Stay with a trusted source right here on Weather Insights. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and turn on those notifications. And we'll be back later this evening with another update. Jeff, thank you very much.